Welcome back for another segment of Megan and the Mayor. Of course, every month we sit down with the Mayor of Lincoln, Larry and Gaylord Baird. Mayor, thank you as always for joining me today. Oh, it's great to be with you, Megan. Thank you. And um, we're going to start today talking off about money. It's on a lot of people's minds with some of the worst inflation that we've seen in 40 years, prices as well continuing to go up. But when we're talking about the city's budget, the city's money, everything is looking good and on track. Yeah, we are really pleased that we are seeing strength in our sales tax receipts and that construction has been booming. I mean, really, this is impressive, the number of permits that our planning department is processing to help facilitate the growth of the community. Those um, applications for both commercial and residential are up 15% over the prior year. So we are really pleased that our, our local economy is getting back on track in the wake of what we've all experienced. and. And we're continuing to invest in our community's top priorities with infrastructure and public safety so that we can have a vibrant community for people to call home. Absolutely. And looking ahead, are there any major changes you foresee um, to the budget for the next biennial or um, things that you can um, talk about maybe that maybe residents would be interested in for changes for the future? Yeah, well, right now I don't have any uh, predictions on big changes. I want to remind folks that of their property tax dollars, we get 16% of what they pay. Most of, of course, property tax goes to support our public schools, much of it goes to our county, and we take our 16%, we try to invest those dollars as efficiently and equitably as possible to deliver on those top priorities of our community. So, you know, public safety will continue to be the the largest chunk of our budget, what we spend our resources on, followed by infrastructure investments. And we are excited to have the opportunity to pull down federal dollars because of the Bipartisan Infrastructure and Jobs Act. So we're looking at how we can apply and, and bring some of those dollars to Lincoln so that we can continue to you know, build out our roads network and replace lead pipes and fix sidewalks and do the things that make our quality of life here really strong. Absolutely. And Folks are always wondering where the money is going, so I think that's great to break it down like that. And um, today, of course, we want to talk about street projects, potholes. You kind of touched on some projects and infrastructure there. Um, but while we're still on the money topic, um, Lancaster County Engineer Pam Dingman, she recently mentioned that because of supply chain issues and inflation, um, they're having to wait around two years for a dump truck. And she said around 18 months for a semi. And then on top of that, of course, is the prices. and Basically, any product that the department needs is seeing about a 20% increase. How is LTU dealing with issues like that? Are they seeing the same problems there? We are seeing similar challenges. We've been very grateful for the mild winter, not only because it's allowed us to get more street projects done, but also because snow plows that we had on order have still not been delivered because of those supply chain disruptions. So yes, we are seeing some of those similar challenges, including costs rising uh, supplies that we need to get our work done in, in the Lincoln Transportation and Utilities budget. So we'll be looking at how to reprioritize projects. We're going to continue to make sure that we get as much done as possible in the shortest amount of time possible, but still at delivering it at a value that taxpayers can afford. Absolutely. Would you like to touch on a couple major projects that off the top of your head you can think of that are going on? Well, you know, one of the things that you'll see coming up in our budget is an expansion of the wastewater treatment plant at Teresa Street because uh, we need to be able to support the growth of our community and part of that is making sure that uh, we can process people's waste. That is a fundamental uh, thing that we do at the city and we try to do that in sustainable ways but at a certain point we just have to grow our facilities so that's an example of, of something that our, our LTU budget is going to be looking to do in the, in the upcoming planning. And then of course every year too the war is waged against potholes um, but I want to remind folks or have you remind them that there is a way that they can report those potholes and help out to send those crews out there and get them fixed efficiently. Yeah, you can go online or download the app for Uplink, U-P-L-N-K, and we can get crews out there to fill those potholes. And we've, I think, done over 5,000 so far this year. But, but because we've had such a mild winter and we have not had to deal with as many freeze and thaw cycles due to snow, uh, we haven't had the same number of requests, but we continue to address them as they come in and as we see them out and about. It's so hard, you know, the, the drought, the fire dangers, but then also like it's helped our roads and supply chain issues have alleviated those for us a little bit. But so there's a flip side to everything there. Um, yeah, any other um, 
street projects, city projects that you'd like to touch on um, before we kind of move on to the next thing? Well, we're so pleased to be continuing our work with the Lincoln on the Move initiative, which is fixing and repairing and rehabilitating streets in every quadrant of the city, and then of course also addressing and supporting new growth at the edge. Um, if you people go to lincoln.ne.gov or streets.lincoln.ne.gov, they can monitor progress. We have all of that information on our city website. You can see what neighborhoods are having repair projects done, um, where in the city our crews are working, and we hope that people continue to be patient if they see orange cones, because we will be you know, ramping up those efforts as the weather continues to improve. And recently, the city released um, the Immigrant Welcoming and Belonging Plan. If folks maybe missed that release, can you explain to them what it is and how it's going to help new Americans who are coming to our community? Yeah, well, Lincoln has been a welcoming community for immigrants and refugees going back over four decades. We've been officially designated a welcoming community. And this new plan is really the next stage of our efforts to be able to welcome new Americans and also to help them assimilate and find job opportunities that help grow our economy. They certainly are making major contributions to our cultural vibrancy. And so this new plan is the product of efforts, collaboration from the city and the county and our nonprofit community and it's a way of helping to not only make that welcome warm but help people feel a sense of belonging and find a way to contribute to the local economy. We want that for everyone in our community and certainly our employers want that too. So this is this is an opportunity as we look to welcome potentially Ukrainian refugees in the future and the Afghan evacuees who've been assimilating into our community. Yeah, you mentioned about how how much um, we are a welcoming community, how, how well Lincoln and Nebraska, I feel, does in that. But why was it important to really lay this plan out? You know, even, even if we are welcoming, it's important to have it on paper and for people to be able to read and look at. Why do you think it was important to lay it out for everyone? Well, it's certainly a statement of our values and signaling that to the world. You know, we are here in Lincoln, the middle of everywhere, and we want to make sure that we are known for our policies, that uh, we are a growing community, a welcoming community. But it's also an opportunity to think more intentionally about the steps we can take uh, to make this work better. And specifically, I'll just give you an example of how recently that's been important to be intentional. We have many uh, new Americans in our community who are foreign trained professionals but don't have the certifications to do those jobs that they train for in their home countries here in the U.S. Uh, so we are working to help people who are nurses get their certifications here in Lincoln. We've needed to build our nursing workforce. So th there's a lot of really practical reasons why it makes sense to be very intentional about helping people develop their full human potential, their economic potential, at the same time that they're making uh, this community stronger and more vibrant from a cultural perspective. Absolutely. Skills that need to be used, <laughs> yes. Um, and then finally, other good news this week, as the city's COVID update. All the numbers continue to trend in the right direction. We remain in the green category. Um, I feel like that was a lot of good news for our community. Well, other communities are seeing certain rises in the BA2 variant, but for us, it, it sounds like the community is doing well. Yeah, so far so good. It is good to be in the green. I still continue to get emails every day from our epi team, our epidemiological team at the health department. It's been wonderful to see single digits for our case numbers and hospitalizations, to see those coming down. There are no, no one's on a ventilator right now in the hospitals. That's great news for the staff of our hospitals, for the families here in Lincoln and Lancaster County. And we'll continue to analyze and monitor and, and, and watch because we know that there are cyclical natures to this pandemic, but we are pushing for additional vaccinations. Over 67% of our community is vaccinated, and that really is the way that will keep us in this good place if people sign up for their boosters. And I would just note for your listeners and viewers that um, there are new mass vaccination clinics being planned for those who are eligible for a second booster dose. April 26th, April 27th at PBA, Pinnacle Bank Arena, the health team will be putting on those clinics so that folks who are ages 50 and up or those who are ages 12 and up and immunocompromised can get some additional protection in advance of any potential new variants that may be coming our way. Absolutely, yes, good to remind them of that coming up as well. Um, that's really all of my questions for you today, unless there's anything else you'd like to touch on or go back and talk about or? 
And I'm just grateful to all the folks who've helped us to get to this place. It's been an incredible um, way that so many people have stepped up to help protect our community and help uh, you know, facilitate our economic recovery and renewal. And I just want to plug that people continue to support local businesses. That's the best way they can help as we move forward into 2022. Yes, lift everybody up. All right, well, thank you very much. And I look forward to next month. Thank you, Megan.